Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention? Please have your tickets in hand before you board the plane. Thank you. Hello and welcome, I'm Johan Castell and you're watching Wings. On the show today, a traditional Rajasthani food feast in Ranthambur and new visa rules for visitors to India. This week's country in focus is Croatia, a beloved good value tourism destination by the Mediterranean Sea. We also cover a dizzying swing above Berlin and impressive caves in Bosnia. Let's start. We recently visited Rajasthan during the monsoon to look for tigers in Ranthambore. Let us show you the unique place we stayed and sample authentic traditional Rajasthani food during the adventure. On wings, every journey is an adventure. And today we are in the heart of Rajasthan, Ranthambore National Park. A land where nature meets history and the wilderness comes alive. The best months to visit for optimal tiger sighting chances are during the dry and hot months around March to May, when watering holes are the most reliable places for tigers to drink. When you go on a safari in Ranthambore during the monsoon, the greenery makes spotting tigers more challenging than drier times of the year. The monsoon, however, transforms Ranthambore into a verdant paradise where the dry landscapes burst into life, and we spot countless peacocks strutting around. We go to the resort after a few hours outing. I'm staying at The Earth at Ranthambore. This place is unique because its villas were built using the traditional rammed earth technique. Let's meet the man behind this hotel. Rohit, how are you doing? Hi. Nice to meet you. Same here. Welcome to The Earth at Ranthambore. Cheers. Please. Looks like a quite interesting set of structures we have here. What are these buildings called? So on this side of the resort, we have our mud villas. Uh, named Vayu Number, and on the other side we have our mud cottages named Neer and Tejas. Okay. So the USP of these villas are that these walls of these uh, structures are made entirely from straw, mud and lime without any use of bricks and cement. All right, so there are a few different ways to make those, but right. you're saying yours is the real, the yeah. authentic way? It is the most organic way that one can build a house or a room. So this is the more, most organic stay that one can stay and live in. They got a quite unique look to them, I have to say. We wanted to come up with uh, something, you know, which people have not seen in the recent times. Yeah. So it is more of a lost art. So if you uh, go through some ancient books and literatures, you will find mention of these uh, mud structures. Uh, for example, uh, Rajasthan in the old, olden times, they used to have these kind of structures. Is there like a, a cooling feature to this type of uh, construction? These walls are uh, porous. Oh. So the amount of oxygen in these structures is much more compared to a concrete house. Uh, secondly, these walls are self-insulating. In summers, you will find these structures cooler than the outer uh, temperature. In the winters, it will be warmer than the outer temperature. You have a bit of a pool area over here. So yeah, so this is where our uh, pool is. Nearby is a pool and a spa with the same rammed earth technique. Rohit tells me about the unique properties of this ancient way of building dwellings and its sustainable characteristics as we pass the amphitheater, where song and dance take place at night. We are situated uh, roughly 600 meters from the periphery of the National Park. Wow. It's almost walking distance. Yeah, it is, it is. But you wouldn't want to be walking on foot in Ranthambore, right? This place is fascinating, but I'm getting hungry. It is time so for lunch. So this is our restaurant, Tatwa. The restaurant has an entire table full of food laid out for us, and I can't wait to dig in. Shall we dig in? It looks like yeah, we're please. in for a feast. Our chef has prepared a nice raisani uh, meal for you, comprising of dal, bati, churma, the very famous uh, Rajasthani lalmas, kher sangri, mirchi ki tipore, two kind of batis. In Rajasthan, we start with the uh, dessert first. Really? Yeah. They yeah. start with the dessert ones uh, yeah. first and then they move to the 
the main course one. So in dessert, we have uh, three different kind of churmas. We have the wheat one, then we have the besan churma, then we have the uh, rose churma. I want, I'm going to start with the plain one, I think. This is like the this And then is you the want to one. move to the different flavors. I think so, yeah, yeah. I'm going to up the flavors as we go. I have a feeling that it's going to go in that direction throughout this meal. Wow. Much drier, I think, no? Much more powdery yeah. type, you know? I have not seen a place where a big meal starts with dessert, but I'm always up for a new experience. At The Earth in Ranthambore, they offer an authentic experience. The food is prepared using locally sourced ingredients and traditional recipes. Although Rohit is vegetarian and I prefer non-veg, there are plenty of options for both of us. We move on to the main course as Rohit tells me about this eco-friendly place. So when it comes to building this property in this earthen style, okay. what was your thinking for that? Like, why did you choose this way of making the, the buildings? There are like many benefits of, uh, you know, living in a uh, mud house. Yeah. We have not deserved the local ecology during the construction. So we are living in a small uh, part of land, which is very uh, near to the national park. And we are not harming, uh, we are not, uh, you know, putting any harm to the local ecology or the environment. The flavors of Rajasthan are as bold and vibrant as the land itself. This is what Ranthambor is all about. Celebrating nature, tradition and the simple joys of life. If you ever have a chance to visit this area, don't let the monsoon stop you. As India improves conditions for foreign travelers to reach its shores, budget carriers add more flight connections to nearby destinations. Meanwhile, a visa temple in Telangana is frequently visited by Indians and keeps the American dream alive. Take a look at the latest updates for travel to and from India. In a new update, India's Union Minister announced that nationals of Japan, South Korea and UAE will get visa on arrival facilities by landing in one of six Indian metros. This will allow for a stay up to 60 days with double entries. The ministry has also expanded the e-visa facility with electronic travel authorization that can now be accessed by citizens of 167 countries allowing for entry through 30 international airports and six seaports across the country. Indigo has an update that can make new tourists land in India soon. The carrier has expanded its network of international routes, increasing frequencies of flights to Singapore, Kuwait and Sri Lanka starting in October this year, aligning with the festive season and holiday months. For Indians dreaming of travelling abroad, here is an exciting story from Telangana. Some gods bestow wealth, while others offer good luck. But one day in India provides a more tangible blessing, a ticket to a new life in the United States. Over 1,000 Hindu devotees flock to the Chilkur Balaji temple daily believing that the divine presence within can help secure a successful visa application. Worshippers seeking a chance at the American dream are instructed to pray for permission to travel abroad and return to the temple to give thanks once their wish is granted. Balaji, considered an incarnation of Vishnu, is the temple's central figure. Located on the outskirts of Hyderabad, this temple was not always known as a gateway to international travel. In 1984, an elderly priest discovered water appearing before a shrine after he circled the temple's sanctum 11 times. Soon, people began visiting the temple to pray for successful marriages, children and acceptance into India's top colleges. Devotees started to believe that the shrine was particularly effective in helping Indians leave the country, earning it the nickname Visa Temple. 
pilgrims replicate the 11 laps around the sanctum, returning later if their prayers are answered, to complete 108 laps as a gesture of gratitude. My belief is that like every single member of my family members, like cousins who, who stay now in US, every single member who got uh, who came here before visa and after visa. So I thought like okay, whenever I go, whenever I do this process, I definitely have to come and visit and see if this really is true and. For thank God, he showed some mercy on me, so I really came back. I got my visa approved. After coming here, like I prayed my wish, and my wish wish came came true. And I'm right now. I'm flying tomorrow for my for my journey, and I strongly believe uh, after coming here, my wish was fulfilled by the God, Govinda. The ritual is precise, with visitors chanting Balaji's name in unison and keeping track of their laps using yellow sheets of paper marked with numbered boxes provided by the temple. Gopal Krishna, a priest at the temple, emphasizes that divine intervention is not guaranteed as God helps those who help themselves. Hard work, we should have hard work plus punishment, plus luck also. If you work hard work also, if you are not having luck, you cannot do anything. India, now the world's fifth largest economy with impressive GDP growth, still sees hundreds of thousands of its citizens leaving each year in search of better opportunities abroad. While the Indian diaspora is global, the United States remains the most sought after destination. This week in our Country in Focus segment, we bring you all the best and latest in Croatia, from some of the must-see places to the most filling food preparations you must relish. Take a look. Croatia is a unique travel destination where you can find nearly everything, from beaches to historic towns, and a wide, colourful, cultural palette. One such popular location is the old city area in Dubrovnik. Designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it is known as the world's finest and the best preserved medieval cities. The site attracts thousands of fans of the famous TV show Game of Thrones. Its quaint churches, monasteries and squares as well as its Gothic architecture take you back centuries. Let's now look at a lesser known spot that hosts birds of prey and is proving to be a popular destination with thousands of visitors every year. This is Dubrava Falconry Centre, Croatia's only rescue and rehabilitation place for birds of prey. The centre, located inside the Dubrava Forest, opens for visits during summer. However, the noble task of caring for injured and sick birds continues throughout the year. Once they fully recover, they are re-released into the wild. Between 120 and 180 birds are being cared for in the centre each year and remain off-limits for visitors. The few permanent residents who cannot survive in the wild help demonstrate their habits and skills to curious bird enthusiasts. Croatia is not just limited to places and birds. Even the gastronomical culture in the country boasts some unique features. In the coastal town of Pua, a traditional Balkan food item with a modern twist takes the area by storm. Called Chivapi, this dish consists of grilled minced meat dumplings served with lepinia, a Balkan flatbread. It is much loved throughout the region. At Pua's famous food market, a gourmet bistro serves the dish with minced veal and beef seasoned with sweet paprika. According to the restaurant's owners, this new concoction was inspired and advised by Chivapi masterchefs in Bosnia. 
We wanted to modernize this food, to keep it affordable and accessible to anyone, but to make it a more elevated experience. The dish has taken the local street food scene by storm in less than two years with viewers and customers praising their extraordinary light and tasty chivapi. The dish is surely here to stay as a top street savoury item. It's not just experiments with food in Croatia that are fascinating. A local geological phenomenon is also changing how wine is produced here. In the coastal town of Ika, Winemakers from all over the country store and mature their wine in a natural underwater cellar. This process adds different scents and flavours to the wine. Let's go back to 2014 to find out how it all started. During routine maritime cleaning, residents accidentally discovered a large plateau about 20 metres deep near the freshwater source. Inspired by stories of undersea-aged champagne, they came up with the idea of storing local wine there. They stored the first few hundred bottles in the sea. And after a year, they were delighted by the mature wine's unique aroma and taste. The good news spread quickly. Today, it has become a summer ritual that winemakers from all over Croatia follow. But what is making the wine develop these features? Here the temperature remains between 7 and 12 degrees Celsius throughout the year, allowing the wine to age more uniformly. Additionally, the sea currents have special influence on the wine. With less oxygen present, the wine matures more slowly and retains more freshness. Varieties like red, white and sparkling wines are matured and can sell up to 300 euros. We suggest you try out its famous wines next time you are in this gorgeous town. Do you like sightseeing and adventure activities in new destinations? If you do, check out our next story about Europe's highest swing in Berlin, combining these for a unique experience. who travel to Berlin typically visit Brandenburg Tor, the Reichstag, the Cathedral and maybe a few museums. But all thrill seekers who do not fear heights can now try out a unique attraction in Berlin. Perched atop the Park Inn Hotel in Alexanderplatz Square is a giant swing billed as the highest in Europe. The ride is located at a height of 120 meters at the top of a 40-story tower block offering extraordinary views of Berlin's skyline with some added adrenaline. Since its inauguration in June, over 100 visitors a day have signed up for the enthralling experience. It was very, very nerve-wracking, I have to say. I'm not afraid of heights at all, but my hands were sweating when I was holding on to the metal. But it was a really amazing feeling to fly out of the front, especially when they give you a push and you get further out. Such a fantastic view. It's really fun. The swingers, as they are called, take a lift to the hotel's 35th floor. They are secured with a safety harness and pushed at their chosen speed. Once you reach the high point of the swing, there is nothing between you and the ground below. There's also a panoramic bar for some post-swing rewards. I wanted to experience something special for my birthday, being a bit of a thrill and making me feel a bit younger at 36. I thought it would be a great experience. The spot in Berlin has beaten the record for the highest swing in Europe, earlier held by a 100-meter swing in Amsterdam called a Dam Lookout. One ride costs around $22 for five minutes under expert supervision. If you happen to be in Berlin, we say it's a must-do activity. Woo. <laughs>
In our next story, we take you to Bosnia and Herzegovina, where the Vjeternica Cave, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, dazzles with its stunning landscapes and rich biodiversity. Visiting Bosnia and Herzegovina might not be on everyone's bucket list, but now you have a reason to add this unique destination. You can visit one of the most biodiverse caves in the world. The Vietrenica Cave, also known as Wind Cave, is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Situated in Bosnia-Herzegovina, this cave is a hidden marvel. Once overshadowed by other famous sites, its unique allure is now recognized worldwide. This is the first time in my life that I visited a cave and I'm truly impressed. It was fascinating, gorgeous, a truly gorgeous experience. My message would be, come visit, it is wonderful. <laughs> what draws visitors to Vietrenica Cave is its breathtaking natural beauty and remarkable biodiversity. The cave features impressive underground landscapes, including spacious halls, numerous lakes, waterfalls, permanent streams and smaller streams. When we draw the line, the rich history, significance for archaeology and science, biodiversity, spacious chambers, fascinating geology and hydrology of this cast cave is what gives us impetus to keep protecting it and a reason to be proud of winning an important international recognition of its value. Visitors are also captivated by its extensive network of underground channels and the chance to explore a one-kilometer trail that showcases the cave's stunning geological formations. Vitrenica Cave is renowned not only for its visual splendor, but also for its ecological importance. It is one of the most biodiverse caves in the world, home to over 200 animal species and 7,000 underground channels. The cave's unique karstic formation creates a cool, wind-swept environment that contributes to its distinct atmosphere. The discovery of fossilized remains, including those of a cave bear and a leopard, further adds to its fame and historical value. If you plan to visit this unique destination, the best time to explore Vietrenica Cave is from April to June and October. During these months, the weather is pleasant, making the underground adventure even more fun. Whether you're drawn by its natural beauty or its scientific intrigue, Vietrenica Cave offers a unique and unforgettable experience. That's a wrap for this week's Wings, but another episode will come next weekend. Until then, it's me, Johan Castell, signing off.